Um, maybe you don't want to almost low side like I just did there. <laughs> just don't worry about what normies think about bikes. They don't get it. They don't understand. They never will. Get them out of here, man. Get those normies out of here. <laughs> get a little baby wheelie here. Let's see how, how she do. Yeah. Should do a little baby wheelies all day, man. <laughs> Let's get off the beaten path, shall we? Because that's what the CRF is all about, baby. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, we are doing our detailed first ride impression and review of this handsome little motorcycle, the Honda CRF 300L. Now, we have this motorcycle here in the shop because it is a giveaway motorcycle. If you hit the link down below to merch.yamanube.co, enter the code CRF, get yourself a hat, a t-shirt, whatever you want. Get yourself 3x entries to win this motorcycle because every dollar you spend is an entry to win. However, if you go to shop.yamanube.co, you can use that same code. But if you get yourself any piece of luggage, we've recently updated our inventory on luggage. Get yourself a Nelson rig set, anything you want. You will max out your entries for the month on this motorcycle. So we are really, really excited about this thing. I think this motorcycle is uh, possibly one of the best beginner bike options you could possibly get. This is a patrician choice, an A-grade choice, a 10 out of 10 choice for your first motorcycle. And it's why we picked it for our beginner bike giveaway sweepstakes. We heard your cries, we heard your woes. The R7 wasn't exactly a beginner bike, kind of beginner plus. This is a motorcycle that I would feel comfortable putting basically anyone on this machine. So what are we working with here? We'll give you some quick specs. We're going to then get it out on the road, get it out on a quick little trail here because this is a dual purpose motorcycle, kind of looks like a dirt bike as you can tell, and uh, determine its nature as a dual purpose bike and a uh, machine that you could live with every single day because it is plated and it's good to go. So we are working with Honda's venerable 286cc single cylinder engine here, making about 27 horsepower and 19 foot pounds of Torgarina modes. Now, a lot of you might say, Yami, that is pretty anemic. That's not a lot of power, but this thing only weighs 309 pounds wet and ready to ride. That is a 60 pound reduction over something like a uh, Ninja 400. It's a 130 pound reduction over a CBR 500R, which you should never buy as a giveaway bike uh, or a beginner bike. Repeat after me, guys. No CBR 500R beginner bike. Don't do it. Bad idea. This is the one you want. <laughs> Uh, Honda made some changes to this motorcycle's engine uh, in the gearbox. They actually shortened up one through fifth gear. It's actually got a really tight ratio between those gears and uh, six gears, a nice overdrive gear for the highway. You'll notice since it is a dirt bike kind of bike, uh, it's got good ground clearance here, about 11 inches if I remember correctly, 10 inches of suspension travel on non-adjustable suspension. This is a 41 millimeter uh, fork over here, uh, non-adjustable, about 10 inches of travel. Non-adjustable shock out back. We're going to talk about that shock because that is a pain point of mine on this motorcycle. And other than that, it's pretty bare bones. No traction control, no ABS, nothing like that. So it's a simple twist throttle. Uh, very intuitive and easy to understand motorcycle. It's a pretty sweet little ride, dude. And it looks great. Are you kidding me? Look how good this thing looks. It has no right to look this good. Now, the big thing about this motorcycle that I think is so great for beginners, especially if you're looking at a dual sport, something like this, is the fact that it is a good ergonomics package and a great seat height. Many of you might say, Yami, it's got a 34 inch seat height that can't possibly be good for beginners, but this is a single cylinder motorcycle and you can lean over very easily. So if you swing a leg over this thing, I'm about 5'11 with a 32 inch inseam, 34 inch seat height, right? I've got both feet firmly down. You can also lean it slightly over and I've got a solid bend in my leg. So this is a really approachable bike. The uh, ergonomics here, much similar to a traditional bicycle that you used to ride when you were a kid or something like that. And uh, it just kind of works really, really well. Uh, one thing I want to show you guys before we get out on the road is the mighty fury and the power of the sound of this thing. Flip the key here. We're going to talk about this later too. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> get it into neutral. Turn on over here. Start it up. Starts right to life. It's a Honda, my friends. Of course it does. 286cc single cylinder doing the Lord's work. Very powerful sound out of this thing. <laughs> so, let's uh, let's get her on the road, man. This thing is all about some fun factor, huh? Right? All about that fun factor with this thing. 
So everything on this bike is laid out exactly as you would anticipate on a motorcycle. Uh, I've ridden, at this point, hundreds of bikes, and this is a bike that is so easy to understand what it's doing. Because it's so lightweight, people use these CRFs as MSF bikes, they use them as training tool bikes, uh, because they're just so easy to understand, man. Like, look how tight I can crack a U-turn here. Look at that. <laughs> and I'm not even a parking lot warrior. I'm not even the best guy at U-turns, but you can crack all kind of slow speed maneuvers with this thing, ride it around, really understand it, really come to appreciate this bike in the slow speed setting. For you uh, commuters out there, urban dwellers, I can't think of a better bike than this, man. This thing works extremely well in the slow speed stuff. Also for urban commuters, because you've got 10 inches of suspension travel, and while that might seem a little bit kind of mushy while you're jumping around here, actually just bottom out of the shock by doing that. <laughs> um, over potholes and bumps and stuff, this thing is pretty fantastic. So let me actually show you what I mean. There's a little jump back there that I was playing around with. can actually hit little baby jumps with this thing. <laughs> and it just elicits exploration. It elicits, you know, let's, let's play around. Let's find stuff. Let's goof around a little bit. And if you're not into speed, if you want a motorcycle that can poodle around and take you places and you can enjoy it and have fun with it like you used to have with your bicycle as a kid, man, this is the right choice for you. So let's actually get this thing on this quick little trail over here before we head out on the road. Let's talk about its off-road manners a little bit and then we'll get back on the road. So jumping up in here through some little baby heads and scraggly rocks and stuff. Uh, I believe the tires are set to a PSI that's a little bit too high. Um, I did not check the tire PSI before taking this thing out on a ride. That is my fault. But uh, this is a 2118 setup on this bike, really narrow knobby tires. So trundling down a little twin track like this super easy i think uh, any beginner rider could uh tackle this within reason um maybe you don't want to almost low side like i just did there <laughs> but uh yeah i mean this is something too again because of the ergonomics package you should be standing up off road but if you want to you can go ahead and just sit down and take this like a little farm bike man you can literally ride this thing like a like a little tw200 or something a little farm bike just play around with it super easy to ride now, as someone who does have a moderate amount of off-road experience, uh, I've got a Husky 501 that is my personal ride that I've had for about three weeks now. I've done a lot of adventure riding and some scrambling and stuff. Uh, did some motocross on my 250 KTM. This suspension package, d it does leave a lot to be desired. I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, quite bouncy. It has this kind of pogo stick effect out at the rear uh, whenever you're kind of going over some undulations and bumps. We're kind of trundling through here on this really kind of loose, larger rock section here. And the bike just feels a little out of sorts, man. It just doesn't feel nice and planted and stable. And that first gear, kind of a crawler gear, man. It's so low. I mean, it revs up so quick off first. Look at this, it's just kind of. First gear ends at like 20 miles an hour, I think. So it's a really tight, tight ratio for first. And this bike actually has a uh, good amount of engine braking. So when you're going down steep descents on this thing, you can actually just chuck it in first gear. Don't even worry about the brakes. Don't even worry about the clutch. That gear is so low that it'll just kind of climb stuff. And I'll show you guys here. We'll keep it locked in first gear here. Make it through some of this section. And it never looks as intense on the GoPro as it is in real life, but this is Definitely a little tricky here. Got some larger rocks. And it'll it'll kind of tractor through stuff, you know? It kind of just muscles its way up over things, which is really nice. Got this little ledge over here. But that rear end just pogo sticks a bunch. <laughs> Leaves a lot to be desired, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, as your first foray into off-roading, you know, if you're coming at this as a beginner rider, this is what you want. This is absolutely the bike you want. This is a motorcycle that's gonna teach you so much and you don't really have to worry about how difficult it is to ride. Big adventure bikes are really, really hard to ride. Even on the stuff like that that I just did, it is not that easy to, to ride a big adventure bike through big rocks and stuff like that. And if you get out of sorts, drop the bike, 
you are screwed. Versus this thing, if you drop it, hey man, it's 300 pounds, just pick it up, you know, no problem. So if you are buying a CRF 300L to do proper 50-50 riding, you know, not just kind of gravel road stuff, I would definitely recommend a tire change, maybe take a look at the suspension, and uh, you'll have a very, very capable motorcycle. Um, these are pretty capable machines, bone stock, but uh, if you do a couple small tweaks and changes to them, you can actually get them to be pretty well sorted. Let's make sure there's no car coming this way. We are good. Now, no dual sport would be complete without us actually taking it down the road and seeing how it does on a little uh, commute. So let's answer everybody's question really quick. How does it do on the highway, Yam? Can I get this motorcycle out on the highway? Am I gonna get run over by cars? Well, let's find out. I'm here as your test dummy, as it were. We're gonna find out if cars run us over. I always hit the horn on these Hondas because the turn indicator and the horn are swapped from where they normally are on bikes. So you'll notice I'm in fifth gear right now. I'm doing about 67 miles per hour. Shift light is on. I'm almost at 8,000 RPM. When I drop into sixth gear, 6,500 RPM, man. It's a massive drop off in the gears for sixth. Cause Honda is like, you know, if you're using sixth gear, you're probably cruising on the highway. And check this out. We're doing 71 miles an hour right now. No problem. And you shouldn't feel bad about revving this bike up and over like this. Yes, it's a little buzzy, it's a single cylinder, but Honda reliability is reliability for a reason. This thing is going to withstand all the abuse and all the high revs you can throw at it. Um, I guarantee you that as long as you change the oil, if you buy this thing brand new, you'll get 20,000 miles out of it, completely worry-free, completely headache-free. I bet the service intervals are ridiculous on this thing. Absolutely ridiculous. So, cruising down the highway here, let's talk basic controls. We kind of went over the off-road stuff. I mentioned how the engine braking was a little intense, and I'll actually show that here. I'll drop it down into fourth, and you'll see that I'm climbing down 44, 42, 41. There's quite a bit of engine braking on this bike, and I don't know if that's by design, um, but I don't, I don't really love that much engine braking on it. I kind of wish it engine braked a little bit less. Uh, basic controls. You guys will see right here, this clutch lever is kind of dangling, kind of, you know, out in the wind there a little bit, just kind of not really feeling super positive from a kind of, you know, perch perspective. But the clutch feel itself, this thing actually comes equipped with a slipper clutch. And uh, it's really nice, man. The clutch pull is the lightest and smoothest I have felt on a beginner bike in a long, long time. And whether you are a beginner who is learning how to ride and learning how to use your clutch, or you're an experienced rider who bought this thing as a trail bike or a farm bike, you will appreciate having a light clutch pull. Um, you will love the fact that if you're in tight, tricky conditions in first gear, and you're having to feather the clutch, or maybe you're in second gear, third gear, managing the power a little bit, feathering the clutch in, managing all the power this bike has, of course, right? Um, you'll appreciate that light clutch pull, and you'll appreciate a slipper clutch that uh, it makes it even nicer and smoother. If I was a more talented rider, I would show y'all how to back in this motorcycle, but uh, I do not feel like doing that, and I don't know how to do it, so I need to learn how to do that someday. But yeah, man, seating position here, extremely neutral, extremely easy to get along with. Uh, one thing for male riders, if you're of the male sex, um, this seat scoop is a little aggressive right here towards the gas tank, and I have actually smashed my nether regions uh, a few times while riding this motorcycle. Uh, I've actually smashed it into uh, the uh, you know gas tank right there quite a few times, and it was not the most pleasant experience ever. I wouldn't say. No, I would not say that. Why don't we go ahead? We've proven its highway potential. Obviously, this bike can do highway. We don't need to see any more of that, do we? I think not. Let's get off the beaten path, shall we? Because that's what the CRF is all about, baby. What a fun little bike, dude. This, this just brings me back to the basics of motorcycling and, and why I love it so much, personally. I'm on two wheels. I got an engine. I got this playful, lightweight little thing. I kind of just flick it around, do whatever I want, you know? Um, this, this is what I come to motorcycling for, personally. This is, this is awesome. Get a little baby wheelie here. Let's see how, how she do. Yeah! She do little baby wheelies all day, man. <laughs> playful little bike, dude. So as I was saying, those ergonomics, extremely simple to get along with. And the coolest part about this bike, too, is 
if you want something that is even more kind of road focused and long distance focused and kind of like touring focused even, they make the CRF 300L Rally, which is a really cool motorcycle that we actually did not touch upon on our reveal because we like dual sports around here on the Yami Noob channel. And uh, yeah, but the CRF 350, wow, the CRF 300L Rally uh, is a great bike, man. That's a really cool bike that you can do some pretty long distances with. There was a guy actually, when I did my Mexico trip, I went all the way down to the mountains in Galeana with my desert sled. There was a dude I was down there with who had a CRF 300L Rally and he was loving it, man. Just loving it. That was a great bike for that trip specifically because you needed to cover long distances and you also needed something that was relatively uh, off-road capable. So I clearly had the completely wrong motorcycle. Let's see how she handles speed bumps, shall we? We'll just yeet ourselves over this one like it's nothing. You don't even need to slow down. Look at this, 30 miles an hour. Who needs to slow down for speed bumps? Not me. And I kind of wish I could see my speed, but I can't because this brake hose is right in the way. Um, now, the reason this brake hose is in the way, some of you might say, well, dude, just like, just tie it to the front fender or just get it out of the way. But that would be a really dumb idea <laughs> because this motorcycle is designed to work with the suspension uh, kind of moving a lot. It's a trail bike, it's an off-road bike. So that front fork is designed to move quite a bit. You can actually see if I just kind of step on it like this, I'm actually probably actioning a good eight or nine inches of suspension travel on the front just by bouncing up and down on it. So you actually need a brake hose that comes up like this and into the reservoir um, with like, like any dirt bike you would see. The thing that Honda did here that I don't really understand why is they didn't really make a brake hose that sits kind of in front of the dash or position the dash in a way that it's easy to read. Um, because right now at my stature, 5'11 or so, this thing's always in the way. I can't see my speed, I can't see my gear indicator, and it's not super important. I'm on a CRF 300L for God's sake. I don't need to know what gear I'm in and what uh, you know speed I'm going because I'm probably not speeding. But uh, I would really appreciate it if I could see out of my dash here. That would be very, very helpful. <laughs> So let's go ahead and tackle some twisties with this thing. On pavement twisties. Although I bet you this thing would make a fun little flat tracker bike. Man, I just, with a motorcycle this handsome and this capable and fun, I just don't understand why you wouldn't start on something like this as a beginner rider. You can totally just kind of amble down your local twisties. Um, you can chuck it down any single track, fire road, gravel road, anything you want so easy to ride so easy to get along with and honda knows that they they designed this thing specifically for the beginner rider the uh throttle response is so kind of linear and tailor smooth the engine's character is extremely linear too it doesn't have power that's peaky anywhere uh it's it's just like a, i imagine it's just being like a, a y equals x graph you know of the power of the horsepower and the torque is maybe just kind of like a flat little line underneath it too uh so so simple to ride and honestly, at this kind of pace here, just behind these cars, genuinely enjoyable to just kind of like flick through some twisties. I don't feel like I need to ride super fast on pavement. I'm just kind of hanging out with this thing and just having fun with it. It's so great. And any potholes or undulations I see on the road, I'll just hit them with wanton disrespect because <laughs> I know my bike can take it, dude. It's so much fun. So yeah, if I sound effusive over the Honda, it's because I'm thinking about it from the beginner rider perspective. Um, I'm thinking about it uh, for someone who is getting into their first motorcycle. Gosh, this would be such a fun bike for your first bike, man. This would be everything you needed to do. Learn all the fundamentals. You'll become such a great rider by learning and riding this thing. But that does not mean this is a great motorcycle by any means. Uh, if we want to get very critical about it, you know, it's it's 52, 49 bucks, right? So it's extremely cheap, built to a budget. Um, the front brake fuel is atrocious. The suspension is very, very strange. Um, again, the rear kind of pogo sticks and the front is kind of wallowy and mushy. Uh, as you guys can tell here, if I stand up on this thing, kind of give it some nice pushes on the, on the suspension, you kind of wallow through stuff, which isn't the best thing in the world. Um, you know, it's pretty gutless, all things considered. Uh, even for a dual sport, my WR250 feels peppier than this thing. Uh, by a long shot, which we will do a comparison because I still haven't sold that bike, so I will probably end up doing a comparison between CRF300L and WR250R uh, so you guys can get a feel for it. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not a perfect bike. But again, for what it's designed to do, entry level, beginner rider, 
I can't, I can't think of any way to fault this thing, man. I really can't think of any way to fault it. And it's a platform you can learn and grow with. You know, if you get this as your first motorcycle and you decide that you want to, you know, maybe you want a, a bigger, more high horsepower bike down the line. You want a uh, touring bike, you know, because this thing, yeah, you, you could tour with it. I, you know, I'm personally of the opinion that you can tour any motorcycle. Uh, you just have to be willing to put up with the comfort features of it. But, you know, if you want something longer distance, big windshield, gold wing status, uh, you might not want this thing. But all things considered, the seat is very comfortable, very plush, compared to a WR250R stock seat, compared to a uh, New Age KTM seat. The seat's very comfortable, very plush, and you just can't fault the thing for anything, man. You really can't. I just wish they put the indicator in the right spot and not the horn right there, because I feel like I always want to just toot toot my little horn. <laughs> it's got, honestly, it's got enough power to keep you entertained. I think a beginner rider that would ride this and be like, no, it's not fast enough, man. Like, nah, dude, like it's got plenty of horsepower given the weight and given the gearing too, uh, makes this thing really enjoyable to ride and to rev out and have fun with, because it is based on that 286cc from the CB. So you can see here, it revs out pretty good, man. It's really not that bad. <laughs> it's a fun little bike. And I think it looks great. It's a really good looking motorcycle too, which never hurts. Uh, I definitely got a look back factor to it. When I, when I get off this thing, I look back. It's got the Honda red paint scheme with the blue accents. It's a great looking bike that you can be really proud to own. Um, yeah, sure, some people might say, oh, you, you got a dirt bike or something like that, but man, who cares what those people think? Who, honestly, y'all worrying about what normies think about motorcycles? Just don't worry about what normies think about bikes. They don't get it. They don't understand. They never will. Get them out of here, man. Get those normies out of here. <laughs> it just elicits such a different type of riding out of you, man. You just want to go bop around and explore. This is what motorcycling, to me, is, is meant to be. Gosh, what a fun experience on this little machine. And uh, people are having a lot of fun with these things. Like I said in the review video, Jake the Garden Snake has one of these as a personal bike. Um, I don't think he's giving it away or doing anything with it. I think it's his motorcycle. And he's uh, doing a supermoto conversion with it. People are trying to make them more uh, off-road focused as well. The Rally Edition's got the big windshield. So it's a great platform that a lot of people are investing a lot of time, energy, and money into. So it's not one of those bikes, kind of like the WR, where, uh, yeah, everything's been kind of thought about on that bike, but the, it's kind of discontinuing because people aren't going to, you know, be making them anymore. Yamaha's not going to make that bike anymore, whereas Honda is very committed to this. Um, I think the elephant in the room is the KLX 300. Uh, we are definitely going to see if we can compare against one of those, but they are, much like this motorcycle, a hot commodity. Very difficult to find a KLX 300 at the moment to get, let alone to compare. Uh, but I'd love to do that comparison, especially on-road, off-road, do like a big dual sport ride with the two of them and uh, see which one comes out on top and which one is better. Yeah, the first thing you'd want to do is to swap out these tires though, man. This, <laughs> these, the OE rubber, man, OE rubber is never any good. You never want that OE rubber, dog. Ah, oh, what a fun bike, man. What a, you can't, you can't uh, fault this thing. Come on, it's like a little puppy dog. What a great machine. And I love the fact that you can totally ride it farm bike style. It doesn't have competition dirt bike energy at all. Um, like you ride my Husqvarna FE501 that I've got. Man, that thing, it's, a, it's just like, this is a competition bike with a plate. This thing is still like good farm bike energy, fun, playful, you know, not gonna get away from you. Just trundle down your favorite trail, kind of keep, uh, keep your butt in the seat, just have some fun with it. Um, you know, not to sound sexist, but this is a great motorcycle if you've got a, a girlfriend or a young kid or something like that. Um, you know, this is a great learning bike for your family. This is a great bike to pick up if you want to teach your family how to ride motorcycles and have something in the shop or in your garage that uh, you can wheel out and be like, hey man, like we're going to go ride this bike, we're going to go learn today, like you follow me, like obviously you, you can have whatever crazy two-stroke monster or whatever bike you want, but uh, this is a motorcycle that um, you know, you can really, uh, it's a random old man walking on the road, that's crazy. You can really keep and, you know, keep for your kids and keep for yourself later on too. That's what I was saying, you, you buy one of these, you don't need to sell it. You should actually just keep it because you could never really outgrow it. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic motorcycle. Um, yeah, it's one of, the, one of my favorite Hondas that I've ever owned, that's for sure. This thing's a ton of fun. Now, 
we do have to check the acceleration on this bad boy. Uh, it is a motorcycle, so we do need to check what it's uh, zero to 60 and that sort of thing can be. So let's uh, give her the beans, shall we? As we say. And that's 60. You gotta go through four gears to get to 60. That was probably seven seconds, eight seconds. I feel like a Toyota Corolla could take me. <laughs> but who cares, man? Look at me now, I'm doing 60 down this road, cruising, having fun. Come on, come on, how can you fault the CRF? So yeah, we, we think this is a fantastic beginner bike option. Uh, we are super excited to compare it and review it against other stuff. Uh, but so far for me, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm looking at it holistically, I think it's a 9 out of 10 motorcycle. Honda did a great job with this thing. There's a few oversights that I wish that they had corrected. Um, I would have personally loved to have seen a, uh, a set of adjustable forks and a shock out back on this thing for that maybe $6,500 price point rather than the $52,49, but I totally get it. Honda's trying to sell a bunch of motorcycles, so they got to keep the price down. But for me, that kind of negates it from being a perfect bike. For a beginner rider, this is a 10 out of 10 motorcycle. Um, you shouldn't, I, I, I think a KLX 300, CRF 300, just about as perfect of a beginner bike as you could ever want. I know you guys remember when I talked about this Vartpelen 401 being a perfect beginner bike, and I still think that. It's still my top choice because it looks so cool, but if you want something that's a little more off-road capable and you're okay with not having the super sexy looks of this Vartpelen 401, man, a CRF 300, dude, it's a perfect bike, perfect beginner bike. Uh, and that's why we picked one up for the Beginner Bike Giveaway Sweepstakes. We heard you. And uh, I think that's going to end my ride for today. I don't know what else to say about this thing. It's fantastic. It's great. So be sure to check out the links down below to yamanoob.co. Get entered to win this motorcycle. Uh, go to merch.yamanoob.co. Use the code CRF. We are giving it away. I am not keeping this bike. I've got plenty of motorcycles myself. I've got my Husqvarna FE501, my Turbo Busa, my race bike. So I am not keeping this bike. I am giving it away. So I uh, check those links down below. Uh, make sure to read all the official rules on yamanoob.co as well. Always very helpful. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you later.